Today we're taking a look at watermelon kombucha, something that seems straightforward, but it's gonna offer a few challenges. For one, the sugar content's about half as much as any other fruit juice we would use, something around seven to eight percent. So if we wanna get the same sweetness, we would have to fill half the bottle with juice. And that's not exactly ideal. And then it's also just got a very subtly sweet flavor, which doesn't usually pair with funky, sour, strong kombucha. So to find the best way to use watermelon in our kombucha, we're gonna try our usual scattershot approach and try six wildly different methods to try and go about flavoring. And we're gonna start with the method that takes the longest amount of time, and that is gonna be freeze concentrating our juice. And to get started, I'm gonna to need to start juicing some watermelon. With this freeze concentration method, we're going to reduce the juice we have by four. That's also gonna concentrate the flavor and sugar by four times as well. Uh, so we're gonna need quite a bit of watermelon and I'm hoping this is enough for about 600 milliliters, but we'll see. So that was a little over half of half of our watermelon, so I might have overpurchased because uh, I bought several just in case. But that's still quite a bit of watermelon to go into a single bottle. But let's check how much sugar is inside. This is a refractometer. It's going to tell us how much sugar is in our watermelon juice. And it looks like it's about 7.5%, which is about average for watermelon. It's almost like this fruit is primarily water. And that's where our freeze concentration comes into play. And I'm using a milk bottle here for the shape of it. We want the bottom to freeze into a solid block so that once it's frozen, we can turn it upside down and drain it through the narrow opening. In theory, the water should freeze first and it should melt last, so our fruit juice should all drain out. But for now, I just need to let this freeze. About five hours have passed here and we've got ourselves a pretty frozen block of watermelon juice. So now all we're going to do is invert and let it drain. We're going to try and capture half of the volume we had before. Should leave us with about 300 milliliters. Then we're going to test how sweet it is and run the process one more time. After one more round of concentration, we were able to get it up to 20% sugar. And it kind of tastes like candy now, so uh, this is uh, more effective than I thought. And it started very thin and sour tasting, but now it's just kind of like straight candy. So uh, I think it was a pretty effective method. And I imagine it's something I'm going to be using again in the future. We could have cooked this juice to try and concentrate it, but uh, by cooking it, we would have lost some of those subtle flavors. We would have changed some of that taste. Uh, and that's not the direction I wanted to go. But since this took all day, and this is only enough for one bottle, there's one other method I want to try. When we juice the watermelon, a lot of the pulp that was left over was actually just more juice. Apparently a watermelon has a lot of water. So I decided to make a simple syrup out of it. I strained it, and I added an equal amount of sugar to it, and I cooked it just until the sugar dissolved. And while this simple syrup did get cooked, uh, it's all just added extra flavor, so I'm not too worried about cooking out any of that specific watermelon flavor. And what we ended up with is 56% sugar, and uh, it's really, really good. The watermelon flavor is very upfront, it's very strong, and it's a pretty broad watermelon flavor too. It's not just candy sweetness. And now that we've got these prepared, there's three variations of a plain watermelon kombucha that I wanna make. And we're gonna start without using either of these. So I've made another batch of watermelon juice, and another thing to note is that instead of our regular black kombucha tea, this is all oolong. It still has all the sourness, it's still got some of that kombucha flavor. It's just a much more subdued flavor. It's not aggressive in your face apple cider. It is hopefully subtle enough to let the watermelon stand through. But to start, I'm gonna add 125 grams of watermelon juice, along with nine grams of just plain simple syrup. Because if we don't have to make watermelon syrup, then I don't want to. And I'm making the kombucha in here first because we probably need to balance this out a little bit. And once it's in the bottle, it's gonna be a lot harder to do. I 
going to add about five more grams of simple syrup. Very watermelony, very sour. It's sweet. It's got a nice punch of sour. I think this is going to be pretty good. It is time consuming to make these little test batches, but uh, we really just saved ourselves from ruining the bottle because I think without that extra syrup, it would have been kind of undrinkable. And that's bottle number one. For bottle number two, we're going to do the same thing over again. 125 grams of our watermelon juice. Except this time we're going to use our watermelon syrup. And I'm going to do another 14 grams to match what we had before. It is much cuter. But ideally this won't taste any better because uh, if you can save yourself a step, then you may as well. Sweeter, less of a punch of acid. Still a pretty strong watermelon taste. Don't really notice a difference yet, but time will tell. And that's bottle number two. For bottle number three, I'm just going to use our watermelon concentrate, and I'm going to start with 80 grams of it. This should get us to a pretty similar level of sugar, but since we're using all of the watermelon juice to get there instead of white sugar, it should hopefully pack more watermelon flavor. But again, hopefully it does not because it would be great to skip this step as well. The goal is always to be as lazy as we can possibly be, as with everything in life. I'm going to add an extra five grams. It was just a stronger punch of acid than I hoped. Yeah, that's pretty good. And that's bottle number three. So between those three trials, we should have an idea of how to best get watermelon flavor into our kombucha. But now I want to see what we can do to enhance that watermelon flavor or make it a little bit more interesting. So for our next batch, I'm going to start with another 125 grams of juice. And I think I'm going to stick with using the watermelon syrup here because, uh, for one, it tastes pretty good, but then also I can't imagine in what other context I would want to have it. So I'm going to add 14 grams. So that pretty much matches bottle number two, but now I'm going to add some hibiscus to it. This should help emphasize some of that fruitiness, some of that tartness. And I'm going to add two grams of it. Also, ideally, it'll add some of that pink coloring just to make it look a little bit more interesting. That's bottle number four. Next up, I'm going to start with another 125 grams. And then because I just can't seem to help myself, uh, I'm going to add lime. We're going to make a little bit of a watermelon daiquiri. This is going to be 24 grams. And just before I lose my opportunity, I'm also going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of grated lime zest. Just to add some of that flavor and aroma from the oil. And then I'm only going to add eight grams of our watermelon syrup. Because the lime juice is providing some sugar. And then we also just want some of that sour tartness to stand through. Because it is a daiquiri. But it doesn't need to be that tart, so I've added four more grams. And one more. And that's bottle number five. And for our final bottle, I'm not going to add watermelon juice or syrup at all. Instead, I'm going to use some watermelon oolong tea. Kind of like we did in our tea sampler pack episode or our mock cola episode, we're just going to steep our tea directly into the bottle and let that flavor shine through. It smells pretty watermelony, kind of like a bubblegum flavor. Blueberries, coconut, mango, pineapple, lemongrass, and organic flavors. And I'm just going to add the entire little satchel of tea, which comes out to about three grams. To this, I'm going to add 14 grams of simple syrup. And we'll finish the rest off with tea. That's our last bottle. These are just going to sit at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit for about three days. And then after a day in the fridge, we should be ready to drink. So I'll see you then. 
So three days have passed by and we've finished our carbonation. You can kind of see that it's separated during that time into a clear layer and then uh, I'm going to call it a bunch of gunk there on bottom. This happened in our tamarind episode as well. I found that it actually did taste better after I mixed it up a little bit. So I'm going to try carefully to invert this without having it explode and take off my hand. Because I noticed the extra juice that I had in the refrigerator did this as well. It kind of separated into a clear and then a pink slime on bottom. And we're starting here with our bottle of just watermelon juice and simple syrup. I missed. This is going to be a messy episode. Looks a little bit pink. Smells quite sour. Smells like watermelon. Very pleasant. Sweet, it's sour, it's got a strong watermelon flavor. Very smooth, very light, that's very good. It's not a very strong watermelon flavor, it's a little subtle, but uh, you definitely don't have to go looking for it. It's just as sweet as I would want it to be, just as sour. Very light and refreshing. I think this one's uh, a winner, but is it better than our watermelon syrup version? Let's find out. We still have our separation there of dark and light. The fact that it's not just like pink sludge that's dispersing kind of bothers me. It's definitely like gritty chunks. See if I can be quicker this time. Looks about the same. Smells similar. There's a little bit more pink grit. A little bit too carbonated and a little too sour. You know, this one's very pleasantly sweet. This one's like very sharp and prickly. I don't like this one as much. Yeah, bottle A's winning so far. But how does it stand up to our watermelon concentrate? Our watermelon concentrate has less sludge there on bottom for whatever that's worth. Definitely came out less pink, more orange, more fizz on top. It's got some watermelon notes, but it's distinctly kind of like a sharp and sour again. Yeah, I think this one's still the winner for me. It's just a little sweeter. This one's just a little too sour. It's a little too carbonated. It's just uh, working together, kind of like sting at my mouth. But it does kind of have like a richer watermelon flavor, so. I think this works is just kind of a sour kombucha. It's very flavorful, but uh, I think that first bottle is the one for me. It's just very subtle, sweet, it's pleasant, it's really well rounded, it's really well balanced. You still get a lot of that watermelon flavor. And that was our least amount of work, just watermelon juice and simple syrup. So uh, I think for me that's the winner, which is a shame because that's not the method I used for the rest of these bottles here. But let's give them a taste. Next up, we've got watermelon hibiscus, which is almost certainly going to explode. I'm so wise. Well, it's pink. And it produced carbonation. This is at least the uh, color I would want in a watermelon kombucha. It's a little sour, it's carbonated, somewhat floral. Yeah, it's just kind of floral, it's sour, and it's not much else. It's not really watermelon, it's not really kombucha, it's just kind of a sour tart drink. With a lot of grit. That one I don't really care for. I don't think that hibiscus is adding very much. I think it needs a little bit more simple syrup, it needs a little bit more watermelon flavor, uh, and probably less hibiscus flavor overall. But on to the next. Next up, we've got our watermelon lime. I forgot about this. It's slightly pink. A lot of fizz. Smells like lime. I can taste the lime and not much else. It's too carbonated. There's not enough watermelon. There's not enough sugar. I think that lime's just a little too sharp, a little too overwhelming. Kind of buries everything else. Yeah, 
not bad. It's just uh, it would take some balancing out there. And now we've got watermelon oolong, which had no watermelon juice in it. It was just a plain kombucha with our watermelon oolong tea. Very fragrant, very floral. It tastes quite floral, and it's kind of got this very bitter, astringent aftertaste. I don't like it. Yeah, that's all there really is to say. It's very thin tasting, not sweet. It's just very floral, and then right into that lingering, bitter, astringent taste that uh, is kind of off-putting. And uh, I'm not really picking up watermelon here. There's a little bit of that bubblegum smell to it, but uh, it's mostly just kind of floral. But this isn't the final bottle. I actually made one extra. Since I had extra kombucha and I had extra watermelon syrup, I decided to make just a plain kombucha with the watermelon syrup. This was 16 grams of our syrup. And this was just purely for fun, unlike the other bottles, which were very serious. It smells like kombucha. It mostly just tastes like plain kombucha, but uh, I feel like there's some little extra sourness. And it also feels just like a little bit muted. It's not bad. I think it's pretty good. It's like plain kombucha, but there's like a vague sense of watermeloniness, if you're looking for it. I think if I gave this to anyone, they wouldn't second guess the fact that it's just plain kombucha. I just think it's very surprising, since that watermelon syrup that I made was so flavorful, and it was so sweet, and it had so much watermelon flavor inside of it. And yet, everything that we made with it was just kind of too sour and thin. It didn't taste very much like watermelon. And then our watermelon juice, which was just thin and sour by itself, that seemed to come through the cleanest. And I think it's just because this watermelon is kind of sour. Uh, it was very ripe, it just wasn't very good watermelon. So it needed some extra sugar to balance that out so you can actually taste all of that. I think a lot of that flavor is just buried behind how sour all this is. So I think there's a lot of adjustments we could do. I'm just mostly surprised that that first bottle was kind of supposed to be a throwaway. I didn't expect it to be very good, but uh, it was far and away the best here, which is kind of why we do these experiments. I think if I made a watermelon daiquiri out of that instead, uh, it'd be a little easier to balance out. And I really think those are the only two that I would probably try again. That first one was pretty great, just as it is. Uh, and then that daiquiri. Well, I just love daiquiri, so I feel like it's got a lot of potential there. And then I could even be tempted to throw in like a gram or a half a gram of that hibiscus just to get some of that color out. Because I do kind of expect my watermelon drinks to be bubblegum pink. That's all I have this week, though. So thank you for watching. It's Reckless Booch.